Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofinet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. And uh, we're still in Angren. We just got a fancy new blade, a fancy new leader card from this elven ruin. But we also got a bit more information surrounding the uh, infamous Gurnikora and a bit of an explanation of where her name comes from. But your majesty, a wealth of gold and coin sits beneath these ruins. You can try to delve into it, but this will require time and the preparation of special equipment. What are your orders? Oh, oh, now you can actually see options by people that actually are not yet not in your party anymore. So have Gabor lead the effort in all things excavating. He has no rival that would have doubled our coin. But now that's the first time we had this because Gabor is no longer in our party. Interesting. Um, yeah, I've not the time nor the patience we must continue. Patience we must continue on. So I don't have any use for a bit more gold if we lose that much uh, wood. So keep heading north, and there seems to be a little shrine here. But I'm just gonna leave it over here because I think if I go up, so this is where we killed those Nilf guardians. But if we move further to the north, I think there's not here. Here, across this bridge, there seems to be another little village here and a few question marks actually. Just gonna grab the resources. And before we move further, I wanna check out our upgrades. Because we're getting close to a fully built out camp actually. So we need 4,000 wood to upgrade the palisade to the next level. Or we could go with the engineer's drafting desk, which is also more wood. I think I'm gonna go for the palisade. I'm lacking in wood then, but I feel like we can earn that back with a bit of coin. So let's just do that. And I'm gonna swap out a lot of my coin for wood in the trading post. Seems like a better balance like that. So now we have about 7,000 gold and 1,500 wood. Enough to, well, offset any losses we might uh, take in the next few episodes. And then... Beware. The bloody mistress despises those who kill her servants. The bloody mistress despises those who oh, kill her servants. Only winter here. Swamp had freeze over. Kill the skeeters dead. Milady, you've a tick behind your ear. Looks he's about to burst. Okay. Oh, Gross. 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 What the hell? Um. Can we actually go onto the water here? No. So let's talk to the traveling merchant. At least he looks like a traveling merchant. My lady, a traveling merchant has stopped in our camp. He's invited you to view his wares. What is your reply? Yeah, so 1,500 gold for 2,000 wood. Definitely gonna do that. So that puts us at 5,000 gold and 3,500 wood. Fine. And then my queen, a local peasant by name of Gozomir, Gozimir, has requested an audience. He says he's found a curious object in the elven ruins. Claims it emits a magical aura of some sort. I cannot vouch for the truth in his words, but the man himself seems soaked in an aura of hooch. Your grace, do you wish to buy the so-called artifact? Yes, of course we do. Of course we do. And we get our next piece of the wyvern shield. But otherwise this village seems to be... Non-eventful. So the plan for today is to first check out whatever is still here. So we have one puzzle in that abandoned of guardian camp. So we'll do that first and then we'll head towards this little uh, village over here before we head towards Tuzla Castle. Just so we do everything right. Hello! Nilf guardians in a puzzle battle. That's gonna be interesting. Fortress in the swamp. Nilf guardian soldiers quickly realize that Angren is nothing short of a hellscape. That's why they did whatever possible to avoid being stationed there. As a result, the Empire Swamp outposts were largely staffed by outcasts, fresh recruits, and those at the mercy of the Nilfgaardian Military Tribunal. Destroy all enemy units, and hint Meef is Whoa, there went my voice. Meef is prepared to deliver the final blows. And Meef is damage unit by one and trigger all allies' loyal ability. Increase the damage dealt by one for each unit destroyed by this ability. Ah, what does these guys do? Spawn a recruit in the same position. Transform a random recruit into an inexperienced general. Okay, so we need to focus on the inexperienced generals. So, I guess... One gold. Hit. 
And then end the turn. Hit. Give me a target. And then do Meave's ability. There we go. Oh. Don't we trigger the loyal abilities? Wait. Oh, these guys don't have a loyal ability. These guys don't have a loyal ability. Let's restart. So I was confused. These guys usually have a loyal ability, but they do not have that right now. So let's go with the footage first. I only loot corpses. Since he'll serve us to double up the fresh. damage. So if we then end the turn, we can use Illyrian Arbalasts One bolt. to damage the inexperienced general. The sigil is the sigil. Sigil, sigil is on a three turn cooldown. So I probably only can use that when we can actually kill something. Because if I now put another Arbalest down, I don't actually kill. Oh, wait. Damage a unit by one and trigger all allies' loyal ability. Increase the damage dealt by one for each. Why is, does that say times two now? If I do this. Give me a time. And then the turn. No, we don't get extra charges, but this. One. And there we go. So that killed uh, a unit. And now I can use this ability like that. Now use the cooldown to use the mantlet to mark one of the Ligian Arbalests. There we go. Now I can use Meave again, but she only does... Ah, she does two damage, so there we go. And that increases the damage to three. Then if I use Mantlet again... On the other Glyrian Arbalests... I can actually... End the turn... There. And use the Forager... To destroy the two arbalests. That gets them back. And allows me to deal two damage. Boxer. On that one. And then deal three damage. That gets that guy up here and the third. Then I can do two damage. And deal three damage with Neve. But I'm gonna lack enough to kill them off, off, I think. So I think we were on the right track. So if I use the Forager first. I loot corpses, except sometimes and then use fresh. the first Lyrian Arbalest. I get two damage, which is good. And the turn. Use the next Lyrian Arbalest to do Lyria! three damage. There we go. Use... Uh, and turn, and then use the next Lyrian Arbalest as four damage, and now we can do one damage on this guy. Because for some reason we start with two charges on the Sihil ability, so that's good. Then we end the turn, use the next Lyrian Arbalest Give like me this, time. so we kill him. And the turn. The next Lyrian Arbalests. Arbalestia, your and command. the turn. So I don't I don't think we even need to use Meave. And the turn. Then we can use a mantlet on this guy. A mantlet on this guy. And consume them up. And that just gives us. Three more charges of five damage, so I don't think I even need to use me. That's one. That's two. And okay, the hint was really confusing there, but we didn't actually need to use me all that much. There we go. Easy peasy. Victory. So that was weird. For some reason, the tip was almost completely irrelevant. I used her ability once, and that was it. So we have a map. Is that this camp? That's this camp, right? Yeah, there we go. That was that was a very stupid map. 
Because it was right where we were. So the animated Gimpy Gerwin card, the asshole. And then we have a letter from Duke Ardal Ep Dehi to Colonel like Colonel, I entrust you to you a mission requiring the utmost discretion. Count Caldwell's usefulness to us is nearing its end. He must soon be removed, but in such a way as to avoid causing fear among our other allies in the north. Given the Count's well-known passion for wine and spirits, poison should prove most effective. We shall put the plan into action once McQueen Meave is no longer an issue. It shouldn't be long now. Await my signal. So they're gonna just kill off Count Caldwell themselves. Which isn't too bad now, is it? I, I don't mind that at all. So there we go, another notice board. And I'm just gonna grab this little shrine while we're at it to boost morale. And then we can move towards Tusla Castle. I think there's two more question marks. And then we should be able to enter the castle. So I don't think that will be for this episode, but definitely next episode we're going to face Count Caldwell himself, even though it apparently doesn't seem Your to be grace, necessary. The charts say we near Tuzli. Angren renders charts helpless to show the way, I fear. Soon we shall halt to sight our exact position. We will know then if our path is true. As you wish, Your Grace. Okay, there we have a fast travel point, and what is this? Sensing a limp in her mount's gait, Meave ordered the column to walk. There was a thorn in her mare's hoof, burrowing deeper with every step. The horse whinnied and pulled her leg away, but Meave knew how to calm her. She stroked the mare's cheek, whispered slow words in her ear. She then extracted the thorn without difficulty. I'm sorry to interrupt, said the druid from behind Meave's back. Yet this is where our paths diverge. We've a modest gift to thank you for the road shared, and for your aid at the obelisk to the marsh gods. Meave wished to respond, but the druids had turned toward the woods, their satchels slung over their shoulders. The queen waited till they were out of sight to open the bundle. Their gift was by no means modest. Indeed, so a thousand gold and five hundred woods, that's definitely handy. And then, Your Grace, one of our scouts had discovered a tree hollow filled with gold and precious stones. When he reached in to fetch one, all he got back was his own bloody stump of a hand. There's something inside that tree and it's got some very sharp teeth. So uh, this seems a suitable task for Egg, have him deal with this mystery beast. There we go. Egg is becoming really, really useful. The trees no longer wish us here. They call for someone else. This land is sick. Defiled by a parasite that grows hungrier each day. Corruption flows from Isgith. It's there an evil lurks. Isgith. The trees no longer wish us... Isgith. So the evil is at Isgith. That's probably talking about Gurney Cora. I thought we could go past here. It doesn't seem like I can go past. So let's head towards this uh, last village before Tuzla Castle then. Because there might be something here, right? At least there's resources here. And another shrine. So that means we're definitely heading into a battle over here. Okay. It seems like fun. Oh, lads! I don't fancy tweets, but you're ever good for pokes, and I'm ass over tits! <laughs> Me and the horseman beside her exchanged a perplexed glance. They'd heard the song clearly, both its tune and its verse. Whoever had hollowed it had to be close, and given their diction, rather well oiled. Rather well oiled, that's the way of putting it. Moments later, a hamlet appeared to the Lyrian's tired eyes. She's off her tits! A great bonfire blazed at its center. Around it danced peasants, barefoot, giggling, hooting, joyful and carefree. One by one, they noticed the queen. Soon, all were silent, huddled together. Children peering from behind their backs. Fear not, said Meave. We mean you no harm. What do you celebrate? A lad's grooming? Nuptials? Nay, my lady. Hell yes. The gods have been kind. Filled us nets and snares with game. Come time we thank them. Yes. You've things to be thankful for. We do, my lady. And we's poor folk. So a queen. Well, you must as well. Your Majesty, stay tonight, feast with us. There'll be music and plenty of room by the fire. Um, 
Oh, are these guys celebrating Gurney Cora? Because otherwise I don't want to be here. Um, gladly the night is young. Sadly, we must ride on. Um, okay, I've, fuck it. I've, I've been saying yes to everything. <laughs> Why not? Began me, daintily dismounting. We all deserve some respite, I suppose. The Lyrians needed no convincing. With astonishing haste, they removed mail and helmets, then eagerly joined in the fating and dance. Amidst the trilling of flutes, fifes, and fiddles, all those gathered reveled until dawn. They could rest at last, forget about Nilfgaard and the many beasts that prowled among the reeds. They'd long remember that night, the carefree laughter, peasant maids whirling in dance, the ale cold as a mountain spring, and the bread they crisped over the fire. One exchange in particular uh, etched itself into the Queen's mind. Why do we go An to this view? She overheard. Not a little. Not even a teeny tiny bit. Okay. I'll say it again. It's not your concern. Of course it's not. Wouldn't be so damn curious if it were. So be it. Keep your silence. But um, um those eyes like the summer sky. That hair like waves of grain. I see the way you gape. <laughs> I think they both like me, but uh, this is starting to be a bit weird. What do you two speak of? <laughs> of you. Uh, your Majesty. Ah, ba 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 ba. <laughs> Couldn't have answered that better myself. Who does Reynard gape at? <laughs> <laughs> Awkward silence. The new ballista. What else? Ah, oh, what a piece of work. Pure art, I say. Can't tear your eyes away for an instant. <laughs> I like Gascon. Gotta admit, I really like the bastard. So, um, don't blame me for a fool. Haven't you two held enough from me already? Yeah, point taken. Don't blame me for a fool. What's this about? Me, honestly, you do better to... <laughs> it's a private matter, Your Grace. One of the heart, you might say. Ah, uh, I'm just gonna poke that till he dies. If you'd allow it, I'd rather not share the details of our conversation. <laughs> All right. I'll leave you to discuss whatever men discuss. Consider me gone. Me turned and walked back to the fire, sat down on an old stump. Ha! That was close. I... <laughs> I love these two. And the faintest of smiles crossed her lips. <laughs> of course, because she knew what they were talking Eve about. Eve expected the villagers to request recompense for their welcome. Yet the peasants made not the slightest mention of coin, and the queen was much moved by their kindness. Once again, those with the least had proved the most willing to share. The Lyrians did not assemble come the morn. The force marched off in the afternoon, unshaven, unbathed, disheveled. Not normally one to overlook contempt for discipline, that day Meave understood even soldiers needed to let their guard down at times. Wow, that was a party without any negative consequences. Okay, I'm glad for it. I really like that when that happens. Not that it happens a lot, but let's have a little chat with these people as well. For our mistress all need be kneeled. Uh-oh. So yeah, I was kind of correct on that front. They were celebrating Gernicora. Round my garden appeared an eagerly chant. I offered a drink, offered a drink. <laughs> oh, God. Round my garden. Yeah, yeah, okay. These people are a bit. Oh, clay pad, oh, clay pad, play us more, you pros. Sing again, we'll dance a bit, and then we'll fix your nose. <laughs> okay. Oh, clay pad, oh, clay <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but then we'll fix your nose, okay. Anything else? Anything else? I don't think there's anything else. We had a lovely party, and now it's time to move on. So, since nothing happened, um. We actually have the time to go to Tuzla Castle, which is exactly what we're going to do now. So, uh, with that rest and a bunch of drunken soldiers, let's attack Tuzla Castle and uh, get some revenge on Count Caldwell himself. Hey, bastards! Bastards! 
Get over here, you scaredy cat. Oh, section end. You are approaching... Ooh, uh, give me a second. I didn't think that was actually going to be a chapter end. So, I used my scouts to reveal further parts of the map, and... That chapter end told me that I missed one golden chest, but on the map I can see one over here as well. Fast to Slug Castle. So I'm gonna take the risk and actually try and just do it like that. It's assuming I didn't miss a chest and we can just move on past the castle after this. This is gonna be interesting because why wouldn't we be able to go back? So let's just recheck this. So we've only been here for four hours and a half. Four and a half hours. We completed seven quests, five puzzles, and six standard battles. And apparently we only found six out of the seven chests. But I don't have anything else to do, so let's continue on our way. In Angren swamps, one can easily lose one's way. Thick fog fills the air, paths end without warning, dense thickets obscure the distance. The sole way to determine one's position is to climb a tree and peer out over the canopy. This duty fell to Meave's scouts, while the force halted below. During one such delay, Meave caught the words she'd longed to hear. Majesty! Tuzla Castle! Its tower! I see it! To her soldiers' astonishment, Meave cast off her gauntlets and started up the nearest trunk. She longed to see the castle for herself, but then she would know sweet vengeance was at hand. The climb proved tricky as the trunk was slippery and the branches, run through with rot, were frail. Yet Meave showed herself to be skillful and spry. As a child, she had loved to scale trees, much to her governess' dismay. Meave looked out to see a mighty stone tower outlined against the horizon. Legend holds Tuzla Castle was to have had three such bastions. Yet King Ragbard, the fort's benefactor, had forsaken the effort when yet another stone transport simply sank into Angren's boggy roads. It was a moment of respite for Meave, a moment of quiet joy. She breathed and tasted air free of the bog stench. She took in silence undisturbed by the hum of mosquito swarms. And she relished her prospects. The coming battle against Caldwell. Attack the castle. The soldiers stood exhausted and filthy, many with raspy coughs, all sick of the meager gruel. But with the command to advance, a new strength sparked within them. Their step was lively, a fire burned in their eyes, each hoping to spill Caldwell's entrails, then dash them upon the fort walls. Yet as they drew near the stronghold, perched atop a stone aisle, their verve dwindled, enthusiasm waned. They had taken fortresses with thicker walls, taller towers, and manned by more men. Yet they'd never seen nor laid siege to a fort standing on land so ill-suited. To rush the bulwarks through waist-deep mud, was this even possible? Prove I was no fool to keep you at my side, said Meave, turning to Gascon and Reynard. A slaughter I must avoid. How will I do it? Your Grace, began Reynard. Set our machines to sling boulders. At the west wall, its weakest. Tis our best chance at a breach. Our men will need cover, added Gascon. Reeds we must harvest and burn. Smoke will cloak us. Conceal us from the castle's defenders. Good, agreed the Queen. Now get to work. There we go, two very important tactics for us to use. Amidst billowing blue smoke, Lyrian footmen rushed through the breach wrought by Reynard's catapults. Though she had yet to forgive her companions, Meave had to admit they'd given her sound advice. There we go, so that probably saved us a lot of soldiers. Here we go. Come time for vengeance. The Siege of Tuzla. Caldwell was nowhere to be seen, which hadn't surprised Meave in the least. The Count never fought on the front. Instead, he preferred to stay back to galvanize the men by shouting encouragement and brandishing his sword, a blade that rarely tasted blood. So a story battle, but it is shortened, so only one round. So we're gonna make the most out of it, and looks like we have a wall again. Caldwell, I've come for your head. I knew you'd come. Your lofty pride presages another dramatic fall. So Caldwell himself... Life is mine now. 
Seize a random bronze enemy unit on a cooldown of 5. So, shuffle an ally into your deck and play 2 cards from your deck and trigger all allies' loyal abilities. Fair enough, fair enough. So, hmm. So there's 25 armor to that wall. Let's start with the drummer. We also have a catapult parts. And when Meave uses her ability, reduce her cooldown by one. Army's wasted time for one like me. Shuffle an ally back into your deck. We're not gonna do that, so let's just end the turn. And we fuck, we lost our drummer, of course. I am going to have to restart this. I can't do this. You know what? We'll see. We'll see. Just gonna try. So, the brawler. And... And the turn. Wise choice. Damn, son. So. Uh, let's spawn three copies of a Deathwish unit on the battlefield and then destroy them. Or... Let's do the castle gates. Wait, what the hell just happened? Oh yeah, I killed myself. Never mind, I'm gonna restart. So, better hand, I feel like. So, we should probably start off with a war wagon. You can try to win them all. So those light infantry won't. units will help us out immensely. And then maybe even pull back the war wagon. So we can use them multiple times. It might actually be interesting. Let's pull that back. And then play two cards from our deck. The War Wagon again. And the Forager, I think. Yeah, let's go for the Forager. So, War Wagon over here. And Forager over here. Which we can immediately use on two Light Infantry units. And kill the Arbalest, which is fine. Would have hoped to actually damage the wall with that, but fair enough. That's not gonna do anything. Every turn on turn 5, on turn start, damage the highest power enemy unit by 5. Its power is an even unit. It is not. Which is great. Then we could go for the Rivian Onager and use that on the wall, probably. Yeah, I'm gonna use the Rivian Onager over here and then just attack the castle gate. Life is mine now. Another damager, which is fine by me. We can also use another drummer. Now we go. Waste the time for one like me. And then the turn. And they're probably gonna focus on the onager, yeah. Um now I'm gonna put down another onager. Deal more damage to the walls. Then use the drummer to pull. Yeah, Dagger 2 blades, but sadly I don't have any Excalibur units in my graveyard. So that's fine. Wise choice. There we go. Then we can use Arnulf to get that loop going. Damage an enemy by the total number of enemy units, which is fine. And then the turn. There goes our first Onager, but we get an extra charge this way. Still not gonna kill anything, okay. Now, uh, if I go for Blood, I can look at five cards and play two of them. Which means I'm gonna play the Lyrian Blacksmith and the Lance Connect. Cause that means with the Blacksmith, hey, hey, we can actually replay Blood. Like this, and then we can play the um, Arbalests and then the Sapper. Okay, some things disappeared there, but that's normal. The Arbalest over here. Every rib's a thief. Oh, the Arbalest over here. That was Maria! weird. It showed the Arbalest and not the... The Lance Connect. So attack the castle gate with eight 
That was actually nine damage. Then the Rivian Sapage, which will be able to kill off our little light infantry units over here. And then damage one of the Arbalests over here. There we go. That's more six damages spread out. Then Arnulf on the wall. That's five damage already. Then probably best to start attacking. Ah, I can actually kill off the castle gate, which is good. There we go. Castle gate down. And that boosts us by two. Then our last three damage should go to this assassin. There we go. And then use the Lyrian Lance Connect on... No, wait, 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 wait. I can use the Angrenny Blade to replace something. I'm gonna pull back Dagur. So if I use Meave like this, I can pull back Dagur. And then I can play Dagur, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I can play Dagur. But what else do we want to do? I think I'm gonna use Xavier and Dagur. Xavier will be able to give ourselves two charges, and then Dogur will resurrect all our dead Skellige units. Give me some of that. Which is quite a bit, actually. Today the day. There we go. Then we get two charges on something. I think I'm gonna focus on the Lance Connect, or maybe. Yeah, I wanna kill that Arbalest, so. Well, you, you know what? Doesn't really matter, I think. Let's give the drummer one extra charge and the lance connect the other charge. No, the onager another charge. Because if I use the onager on the assassin, that puts them all to eight and then I can do this twice and deal damage like that. And the turn. That was an awesome, that was an awesome play. So we lose the onager. Draw a Lyrian and an Elf Guardian unit. Interesting. That's not going to help him too much. Now, force an enemy to damage Disgraced Warrior by its power, then damage the enemy by Disgraced Warrior's power back. Um, I think this does 5 damage. That's not good, but Disgraced Brawler can do 2 damage on a lot of dudes. So, Black Infantry, Arabian Onager, there we go. Then... Duel with the Arbalest. And duel with one of the Assassins. Use the Regiment Drummer. No, wait. I'm gonna protect... How am I gonna do this? I am gonna immune... Yeah, I'm gonna immune all my... Never stinks, top no units. matter how well. Archer shouldn't be any more trouble. And then we got killed by destroy the next unit plate from your opponent's hand, but we did get the immunity, which is great. So that actually immunes everybody. Every turn on turn start boosts adjacent units when they this guy has armor. So might as well uh, take off that armor, right? So that's five. Then the Northern Wind card. There we go, there goes the armor and the assassins. And use the regiment drummer to get the yeah, great rider. I live to serve you. Not that big of a problem, I think. He won't be able to move anymore, but that's not an issue. And he keeps pulling cards. Then uh Arnie of the Patricide on the Imperial Enforcer. Rainer's Siege, transform catapult parts into catapult. Ah, oh, I should have seen that sooner. They changed his ability as well. Destroy the palisade. God damn it. <laughs> well, never mind. We won this anyway. That is interesting. So, he could just turn, the <laughs> turn it into a catapult. And I made a mistake, because now I can't use Isbel. Make love, not war. So I can't, yeah, I can't do anything with this. Um, and then just four damage on the armor and that's pretty much it because I can't do anything anymore. Okay, we'll see how this ends. 
for the queen! I'm assuming I'm gonna win. God save the queen! Although that seizing is annoying. To the last! That's 90, 92, yeah. and 107. Goodbye, Don't Caldwell. Touch him. The count is mine. Count Caldwell is down. Many of Meave's victories have been immortalized in poetry and song. But not the fall of Tuzla. Lyrians fought Lyrians. Brothers killed brothers in rain and mud midst a cursed swamp. Certainly nothing to inspire a bard. Near the battle's end, Meave stormed the great stone tower to which Caldwell had fled. The queen ascended the stairs, dealing blow after blow, blood cascading down in her wake. She reached the top floor to find the Count waiting, with no intention to defend himself. If it's mercy you expect, you'll be sorely disappointed. Mercy? I know you all too well for that, Meave. Ever vindictive and cruel. All this from a paragon of knightly virtues. You stabbed me in the back, Caldwell, and used Willem to do so. My son! Who agreed without a moment's hesitation? Forsaken by your own son, your flesh and blood. What's that say about you? Oh, you tread on thin ice. Choose your next words carefully. Spare me your threats. You'll kill me all the same. Death can come in many ways, Count. Some quick, some slow. My, my. How you strut and vaunt. Terribly sure of yourself. Perhaps too sure. Your castle is mine. I've crushed your force. I dare say no, I'm not. Precisely my point. Don't you see? The Empire's not one army. It's dozens, hundreds. It's what I strove to knock into that thick dome of yours. Alas, you're too much a dullard. Soon as I'd learned you'd crossed into Angren, I sent for reinforcements. They'll be here soon. Three regiments, armed to their teeth. <laughs> or not. Because we found that letter before that Ardal Abdei actually wants Khan Caldwell out of the way anyway. So this is an easy way for him. Um, I'll face them too, or I shall be long gone. Yeah, well, we don't need this castle. They'll find your corpse impaled upon a spike. While I'll be long gone. <laughs> By which path, I wonder? Well, there was a back path out of the castle. But one bridge leads to Tuzla. As it happens, I ordered it raised as you laid siege. The swamps around the castle are too deep to cross. Try to rebuild the bridge, the Imperial troops will arrive before you can finish. Your men, they'll slay as you watch. And then they'll wring your neck. I wouldn't be so pleased were I you. You won't live to see this outcome. I know that, but I take heart in the truth. Though the castle you've seized and will likely kill me, I've won. Outsmarted you, Meave. Twice now. And you know what? It wasn't even that hard. With those words, with his arrogance and contempt, Caldwell had gone too far. The Queen gripped his shoulders, pushed, Caldwell stumbled backwards, then tripped out the window. A blood-chilling shriek filled the courtyard, then broke off abruptly. Now fool me thrice. Try. Meave slapped the dust from her hands. The traitor had met a deserving end at last. Yet this was no time to revel in the Count's demise. If Caldwell had spoken the truth, the Queen and her army were in grave danger. So, we didn't even get a choice there, and it was just throw Caldwell out of the window. Neve scouts quickly confirmed the traitor's claim. The bridge was indeed in flames, and Nilfgaardian regiments were advancing from the south. Now to confirm if there was truly no other route by which they could flee. The Queen ordered her men to ask the local peasants. One of their number, a stable hand who'd lived near Tuzla all his life, claimed a secret path led out the back of the stronghold. King Ragbard himself ordered it built. Adam dropped great stones into its swamp, one after another, like beads on a string. Bitter water covers them, so you can't see nowt at start. Can make them out if you go proper slow, though. Oh. What is it? The stones. They lead to Isgith. And there, my lady, lurks an evil worse nor any black-clad army. What? 
A beast of some sort? Some say beast, others, god. Gernikora, they call her. And you'll yet see, my lady. Isgith shines red with your blood. Okay, there we go, Gernikora again. A silly tale to frighten children, Meave thought at first. Then paused. For something about the man's voice made his every word believable. None too encouraging, yet preferable to certain death. Tell me, from Isgith, will we reach the banks of the Yuruga, near Red Lobindon, perchance? Aye, Your Majesty. You need but head north, and pray all along the way. Okay. Soon, Meave stood where the stable hand had said she should, at the edge of a vast marsh. Carefully, she dipped a foot into the broth and probed for solid ground. Sure enough, she found stone. One cautious step, then another. Meave slowly strode off towards Isgith. I love how this game is set up. The sound design during those scenes is perfectly on point. So, reinforcements added to your command tents. Another special card, we get a lot of gold and a lot of wood. Revenge is best served cold. We don't get to raid the castle ourselves, but this seems to be a path forward. So I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And on the next episode, we'll be heading towards Isgit, the home of Gurney Cora herself. So thanks enormously for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.